Mike's been consistent from day one. His size and his strength all the way through. Yes, as you get older, the quality of muscle changes. You know, you get that mature muscle and stuff, so you start looking different. Because I remember I put up a photo on Instagram not long ago when I was like 24, and then when I did the universe at 42, I was like, Lee, 42, your conditioning was much better, your waist looks smaller, blah, blah, blah. It's just like I said, it just takes time. And when people see your history of how you look back then to then, I wouldn't say you're on drugs because it's been consistent all the way through. You haven't gone from, here was Mike at 200, oh, fuck, now it's 300, six months later, what the hell happened? It's like, you see some of these guys just balloon out. But then too, it's like I haven't taken gear now for probably four years. When I had my car accident, I took a bit of Decker hoping to help my thing. And, you know, I've still got size and people go, Lee, how do you keep that size not on gear? It's like, I still eat and I still go to the gym every day. Why would I lose the muscle if I'm training? And if you Wait. feel that now, I'm glad you, you said that. that. And if you built that foundation, well, yes, sure, if I did nothing at all and didn't lift the weight ever again, the muscle will atrophy and stuff. But if I'm still training, you know, like my good arm, he's still 21 inches. Why would it disappear just because I'm not on drugs? It's muscle. It's there. It's not oil. It's not. Let's just dive into this yeah. because I, I get a lot of people that ask this and, and, and it's a confusing world now with more information people got. Mm -hmm. So um, you're 20 which is funny because at 20 years old, I looked good. I looked uh -huh. good. By 15, I was 272 by 15 years old. So yeah. I was eight pounds less than I am now at 15. And I've been the same, you know, 275, 285 throughout my entire life. But the question is at, at 15 to 20, where our testosterone is beyond uh -huh. the highest you could possibly be. And then as life goes on, as we get older, it goes down. Why do people, and, and again, we're at basically 40 years of experts at this in the sense, why do people think if testosterone leaves your body as you get older, that you just disappear and, and like a little sand jar, you just fade away to nothing? Why is that? Why do they think that? Why do they think that I think, if you're I think testosterone, uh -huh. if you don't do testosterone, you fade away to nothing? I think it's because of these so-called experts that pop up everywhere now and go, well, if you don't do this, you do that. It's impossible to look that way. If you, I, I get people all the time saying to me, it's impossible for Lee to look like that at, when he was young at that age. Why is it? Just because you can't do it doesn't mean somebody else can't do it. Everyone is, is good at something. So I think a lot of it's like that. But also, because there's so much information, and as you said, this bro science bullshit, you've been there and done it. I've been there and done it. So many other bodybuilders, Robbie Robinson, all these guys have been there and done it. But yet they don't want to listen to these guys who are actually been there done all these years, 30, 40. Robbie's been doing it probably, what, 60, 55 Robbie's years, 50 yeah. years. Right. So, so like, he could give, he's a wealth of information, but Robbie could tell a young kid something and they'd go, eh, get home, let me go on this bodybuilding. Let me go ask website. a 25-year-old that's famous right now. Let me uh, ask the 76-year-old that's still ripped and still strong uh -huh. his information, which is mind-blowing to me. Yeah. Why would you ask a 25 year old that is famous and at 25 and you and me have been around this long enough that we already see these 25 year olds from 10 years ago look worse at 35. I tell you why Mike, because, Wonder. because Mike and Lee, they're fucking liars. They lie. They don't tell the truth. It's like, I'm here to tell the truth. I did those videos with Tom Platts. I think they're on YouTube. There was me, Ronnie Coleman, Chris Cormier, and all the other guys blurred their face out, distorted the voice like this. When Tom came to me, I said, Tom, just put me on as I am. I've got nothing to hide. I'll talk about drugs. I'll talk about the amounts I use because to me, it's like, yes, if you're going to do bodybuilding, yes, taking drugs, no one knows what a safe amount is. I've always said I used it. I never abused it. But even using the small amounts I did, has that caused problems to me? Touch wood, not that I know of yet. My heart's still good. Everything's fine. But I always try and tell people, look, I'm trying to tell you, if you get into this, you have the great genetics and the drive, you eat well, you sleep well, you train your ass off. You can do it if you get to that level and need drugs. Do it with a small amount. You don't need these large amounts. So if you are going to do it, trust me, use a small amount. If you're taking a large amount now, anyone watching this, if you're taking 2,000, 3,000 milligrams, I guarantee if you come off for five, six months, go back on and only use a couple of hundred milligrams, you'll make the same fucking gains you're making now. The only one who's benefiting from you buying the, taking these huge amounts is the guy you're buying it off. Because he's getting fucking rich yeah. because you're, you're buying so much gear. That's why I tell people, not because people go, well, he's lying. I said, I've got no reason to lie. If I took 10,000 milligrams a week, I'd say, listen, I took 10,000 milligrams a week. Look, my life's been an open book from day one. 
I've talked about everything from my drug use to my sex life to whatever. People go, Lee, I think you're too open. I said, look, I'd rather be open and tell people shit rather than whatever I've done, good or bad, I'd say it because that way no one can ever come up to me and say, Lee, if you don't do this, I'm going to tell people you've done that. I'm like, I've already told people that. Go ahead. I don't care. It's like, I'm an open book. I've got nothing to hide. So that's why I'd rather see people listen either to me or somebody where you don't need these large amounts. Like, you know, he's a funny guy, Tony Huge. But when I watch his videos, I'm just like, oh my God. It's like, these young kids are going to be watching this, that last one where they're sitting in the restaurant, shooting up insulin and doing all this shit. And young kids, you've got so many followers that go, this is what it's really like. This is what you've got to do to be a bodybuilder. You've got to inject insulin in your muscles this amount of times. You've got to put it here, put it there. And all these young kids are just, when I came up as a, you're probably the same. I was into the training more than anything. I loved the training, the eating and the sleep. When I got to about 16, okay, I've heard of steroids. I've seen in Muslim fitness. There might've been one article, a small article. You were 16 sudden, by then? Well, like when I was 16, when I started knowing about steroids more, like I just went to the gym to train. I didn't really right. even hear of steroids from the age of 13 to 16. But then about 16 on, you'd hear about more of it. And then I said, there'd be an article in Muslim fitness or flex. But then articles become more and more later on. Right. So it's like the training was first, the nutrition, the hard thing. And then when it got to the point, drugs was the last thing. It wasn't. But now people are putting the cart before the horse. That's drugs first. I know people that are on cycles and they haven't had one day in the gym yet. I've got to take gear first and then go to the gym. And it's like, there's none of this foundation. Uh, I appreciate work. you saying this. This is, this is so important because of the fact that I try to tell people I, I, don't, I don't want to work with the guy that wants to be the pro bodybuilder. You go, mm -hmm. go work to somebody else. I want to show people, and, and especially guys and, and, that you, or, and women, that you can get in shape um, still with just the consistency of eating right and, and yeah. transformations. And you've worked with people. That, well, I, I can tell you the funny story. I can go. tell you the funny, funny story of this. There used to be a guy at World Gym, young kid. And he'd been training a couple of years and he'd pound me. Oh, Lee, you know, I want thing to do on a cycle. Why? He goes, well, I can't put weight on. You know, my bench is stuck at this weight. You know, I just can't do this. I can't do that. And he'd only train maybe sometimes four times a week. Or then he'd come in three times a week. You know, like, this isn't happening. I said, he pounded me hand. I said, look, I'm not getting your drugs. Get him somewhere else. Finally, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to fix this guy up. So I said, okay, look, I'll get you some Diana bottle. But don't tell anyone. So I went and got these things. I gave them to him. I said, now here, why are you taking these? I want you to eat this many meals a day and no more four times oh. a train, at least, at least five yeah. times, at least five times a week. I want you to train. So I give you this eating plan, this training plan. After like four, four or five weeks, hey, Lee, I've put on 10 pounds. Guess what? I broke my bench. I did this. I did that. Those don't are great. I said, do you have them on? He's like, yeah, they're in my gym bag. I said, go get them. He got them. I said, instead of swallowing, I said, chew them. Before you say this, food. before you say it, I hope everybody right now tells me what he's going to say because this is beautiful and I try to freaking tell you. Go. I said, chew those tablets instead of swallowing. He goes, he goes, he goes, fuck, they're sweet. I said, yeah, they're fucking saccharin, they're sugar tablets, you dickhead. I said, you hear you were thinking you were on drugs. The only thing I did was change your fucking diet, made you more consistent with your diet and your training. And look how you've changed. You put weight on, you look better, you can see your abs. Your strength's going up. It's all in your fucking head. I said, you could have done that. That's why I tell people, you could take someone who's got a trainer, puts him on drugs, or you could take someone, just change their diet, change their attitude, change the way they train, and you can have them looking better than the guy taking fucking drugs, but yet they don't want to hear that. It's like, it's crazy. But yeah, he got all pissed off. I said, no way getting pissed off. I said, you did it without the drugs. Well, you lied. See, I was taking down. I said, it doesn't matter. You look at the games you've made, and you it's all about consistency. You're more consistent with your training, your eating, and now you've made these changes and you weren't on fucking anything. So I love that because I, I trained some people and it's, it's great that you and I have lived this. So we can tell them over and over again, listen, does it help? Sure. If that's where the way you want to go, you can go that way. But there's a whole world over here that you guys are saying, no, it's not possible. Mm -hmm. You and I hate the fact because we know a lot of guys that it is. And, and it's like, no, you can do this whole transformation over here. You don't need to go over there yeah. and don't rush it. Just, it does take time. I get it. Mm -hmm. it. It's a pain in the ass. Maybe, maybe this isn't for you because of the and amount of time it takes, but it's. And people, and it's people don't understand. World. People don't understand too. It's like an illusion. You can take a guy who might've been 150 pounds, 60 pounds of just soft in that. You get him trained and eat him right. 
when he starts toning up and getting ripped. Now he can still be the same body weight, but now he's got the muscle and ripped. People are like, oh fuck, he's on drugs. Look at him, look how he changed. No, he didn't, he just changed his body because he looks better. Now I've seen so many guys get accused of being on drugs and all they've done is gone from 200 pounds down to 160. But you know what it's like, it's an illusion. At 160, once you're ripped and shredded, you look bigger. Than well, you. let me ask you this. Doing. I was 285 when I was 285. You're going to say it right now. I know you are. When you're 285, which is a good, what, 35, 45 pounds, 50 pounds bigger than on stage? 70 pounds it was. 70 on pound. Okay. So I love this fact. Because of the fact that you at 285 and monsters, they're like, huh, yeah, you're not looking good. You're not that. And then you rip to the bone with your tricep popping out and everything in the straight. Mm -hmm. Tom Plaz next to you. Holy shit, you got bigger. How'd that yeah, happen? All the time. I get bigger. I'm 50 pounds smaller. Well, that's what happened because I started dieting at 285. By the time I got to 240, people were like, fuck Lee, you put some size on. I'm like, I just lost 45 pounds. When I won to San Francisco in- Did I not tell you this? I'm telling these kids, <laughs> all my guys over here that work here, they're all youngsters, but, but it's the same thing that when they're putting up videos, um, I, I finally went off season. I get up to three, 310. And then they're like, uh, oh, you look like you put on some muscle when they see a picture of me at 250 ripped to the bone. I'm like, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a 60 pound lighter guy that, you know. It's well, the funny thing was when I won that San Francisco, you know, I, I think I was first, Chris called me was second, Dex the third. And when the show was over, everyone come up, Lee, what did you weigh on stage? You looked incredible. I said, what do you think I weighed? The consensus was 235 pounds to 240. I said, I weighed 199 pounds on stage. You're like, fuck off. No way. I said, that's what I weighed on stage, 199 was that the pounds. Smallest, I, I was that the smallest that was light, for that period of time? 